Hi, I'm Sean and welcome to another Vector Tots quick tip. Today we'll be looking at making a scene with atmospheric perspective. As you can see, I've made a bunch of objects, um, some hills and a house, and now I'm going to size up my first object, scale it up to fill up the foreground section. And I've got a background of the sky and a few mountains which I'm going to be placing into the background as well. First of all, I'm going to name my layers. I've got my foreground, my midground, and my background. The easiest way to get these background objects into a perspective view is to use atmospheric perspective. So the further away something is, the less contrast, less detail, and the closer it is to the colour of the atmosphere. The colour of the atmosphere in this case being the blue gradient. So what I'm doing at the moment is cutting the hill objects and placing them into the scene, into the mid-ground layer. And to do this, I select my object, I group it, so that's command G to group, and then I cut it, command X, and then I select my mid-ground layer and paste, I'll cut that, then select the layer and use command B, which is place in the background. Now I select that grouped object and in my transparency, I option click the preview to make a mask. Then double clicking in that mask preview will allow you to solo edit the mask. So I'm placing a rectangle into the mask and filling that with a linear gradient. Now I'm going to use the gradient tool and the quick key for that is G and I'm going to edit the gradient going from dark to light. So in the mask object, black means you can't see anything and white means you can see everything. To get back into the layer mode, all you have to do is click the object in the preview panel. So then I'll go through and do the same to each one of these mountains. So option clicking in the preview panel to create a mask. And then you can work in the mask while also being able to see your layers. Just make sure your mask is selected. So masking is fine if you don't have anything behind the masked object. But if we put a transparency mask, our object is going to be see-through. And so what's in the background will be able to be seen. We don't want that, we just want the objects to match the background. So what I'm going to do is copy the object, paste it in back, so that's Command C, Command B, and then I'm going to get rid of the mask by going into the menu and disabling the mask. So that's in the transparency menu. Then I can select the object that is behind, also within the transparency menu. And now open up my Pathfinder palette and choose make one object. Now I'm going to get the eyedropper tool, which is I, select the background gradient, and then modify the gradient using the gradient tool, G. So now you can see that I've filled up that background with a similar gradient so that we're not seeing anything behind. Now I'm just uh, modifying to get it looking exactly right. And I'll do the same thing to the final mountain, but this time I have made my background object before I applied my transparency gradient. So now that they all have um, 
transparency gradients on them. I'm going to need to make the color similar to the background color. So to do this, I'll use the HSB sliders, which are hue, saturation, and brightness. It's just a bit easier when uh, modifying colors like this. Uh, I'll select the outline color and then make it a little bit brighter and also make it a little bit more blue to match the background. And then do the same to my fill object. So the closer the mountains become to the viewer, the less change will happen. Then I use the hue slider to match the background colors. The further back, the more matching the colors are. So I'm just shifting the colors more towards the blue spectrum. For the final touch, I'll make a rectangle in front of all those objects. Fill it with a white to white gradient, the end white color being 0% opacity. And so we've got a little bit of fog rising in the background. And finally, I'll save it for web.